the whip transitions. They're a bit of a classic because they look cool and they're surprisingly easy to make in DaVinci Resolve. And you can save them into your media pool and power bins so they're always there ready to go. Simple. But before we get into it, let me just take 20 seconds of your time to thank this video's sponsor, Audio. Audio is a music subscription service with a ton of awesome music and awesome sound effects. And you can get your first year subscription for just 59 bucks using the code Alex Sever link down below to go check them out for yourself. So let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you how to create these whip transitions. Hey, So I've got my timeline set up here on the edit page and as you can see we've already got an edit point ready to go and that's where we're going to put our transition. Now we're going to build these using adjustment clips. We're using adjustment clips rather than making the standard transitions because A, they're a little bit easier to make, B, you can save them within power bins, and C, you can then apply them over multiple different tracks so you can just whip things in and out nice and quickly. So open up the effects library top left, come down to the toolbox, effects, and then grab an adjustment clip and then just pop it above your edit point like so. You want the edit point to be roughly in the middle of the adjustment clip. I like to make mine about one second in length, which you can do by simply hitting Control and then D to open up the clip duration. One second, change, and then you're good to go. Then right click the adjustment clip and go to Open in the Fusion page. And you should see something like this. So we've got our nose down here and our preview window. Now we're gonna build the entire thing just using a single node. And the one you want is this one right here, is the transform node. So grab that, drag it down onto the yellow line until it goes yellow and blue, and then release your mouse like so. Give the transform node a click, and within the inspector, you should see all of the transform controls within here. The center control, the X1 specifically, if we click and drag, this moves it left and right. And this is what we're going to use to do our transition. But we don't want to use X and Ys because they're tricky. So instead, right click on center, then go to modify with, and then come on down to vector result. Then click on modifiers and you'll see the vector result controls within here. A vector result makes this sort of thing much, much easier. You can use a distance slider to say how much you want to move. And then you can also change the angle to say in which angle you want to move rather than having to mess around with X and Y's and all that complicated stuff. So we've got a distance slider and then we've got an angle to change the angle that we move. Keep the angle at zero for now. We'll come back to that in a moment. To amend the distance, again, we're gonna do this using a modifier. So we're gonna right click on distance, go to modify with, and then go to anim curves. Then you'll get the anim curves controls here. The anim curves will simply move this from zero to one. It'll move that distance from zero to one over the whole length of this composition. So again, we don't need to mess around with keyframing or doing anything particularly complicated. Within the anim curves, it's currently set as linear, which is why it looks kind of boring. So change the linear curve to easing and then change the in and out. You can experiment with these, but I like to go with Expo for both. It just gives it a nice look. Now, if we hit play, you're gonna see we have a nice whip animation. And we don't need to mess with that, that will just always work. Now the big problem, obviously, is we're left with this empty space. So go back to the tools at the top underneath the inspector, come on down to edges and change this from canvas to wrap. And now if we hit play, it's gonna whip and just change like so and look pretty good. The last thing that's really missing to hide the actual whip is some motion blur. So again, from the transform tools area, click on the settings tab and then come down to motion blur and just tick that box. Now there are loads of different ways of doing motion blur. This is the easiest way, but it can be a little bit chuggy. So if it does skip or slow down on your system, that's just the fact that we're using this motion blur. It should be fine once it's rendered. So all I'm going to do is knock up the quality to get rid of these jagged edges. Another quick tip, this quality slider only goes up to 10, but you can actually put higher numbers in there. So if you're still not happy with the quality, go a little bit higher. I think about 13 generally works really well. Just remember that the higher you go, the slower it will be to run. Then if we hit play, we have ourselves a real nice whip transition. I'm gonna jump back over to the edit page. And if we hit play again, it's working perfectly. We can make this longer or shorter. And as long as it's roughly in the center of the edit point, it will always work as expected. Now to save this, give it a click on the timeline, click on file within the inspector, 
give it a name. I'm going to call this whip right. Then we can simply drag that and put it into our media pool. So it's saved within there and put it into one of our power bins like so. So it's available from every single project. If you're not sure what power bins are, I've made a video talking about those in the past. It's linked above and down in the description below. So now we've saved our whip right, we probably want to make another one that whips in a different direction. So with the whip right on the timeline, right click, open in the fusion page, go to transform, go to the modifiers, you want to go back to the vector and then you've got angle. Now the first thing you need to do is just change this image aspect to one. It defaults to 1.7, just change that to one. And then you can change the angle. Now this angle will only work for right angles. So we've got zeros, 90, 180 and 270. So if we went to 270, we've got a simple whip down. If we went with 180, we've now got a whip to the left. So this one, let's go with 90. So we've got a nice whip up transition. We'll jump back to the edit page. We'll go to our whip right on the timeline, into file, change this to whip up, drag this into our power bin. And now it's always there, ready to go. We drop it on our timeline, we hit play and job done. Do that for your up, down, left, right, and you've got four reusable, simple whip transitions. If you jump into Fusion, open up the Anim curves and try increasing the scale underneath scaling to get some mega whips like this. And if you're feeling particularly brave, try adding some camera shakes, some zooms, and some other cool effects. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, let me know down below. If you want to see more transitions, let me know that as well. Thanks for watching, take it easy, I'll see you next time.